Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 2, part of this playlist, which I'm calling Discrete Random Variables. And let's jump to today's topic, which is the negative hypergeometric distribution. In my opinion, this is a very powerful undertaught discrete distribution. Now, to contrast it with the negative binomial distribution, both are going to sample observations until you have a certain number of successes, you know, or, or observe the, the trait of interest, you know, so many times, a certain number of times. Negative binomial distribution deals with an infinite sample. The negative hypergeometric distribution deals with a finite sample. So let's, let's jump right in. Assume we have a finite number of objects, capital N, R of them are successes, you know, or the trait of interest. And that means N minus R objects are failures or not the trait of interest. We're going to continue to draw objects without replacement until K successes are observed. Let X equal the number of trials needed to observe K successes then the density of X is a negative hypergeometric distribution given by this requirement or this formula. Now it looks like a hypergeometric distribution, but it's absolutely not a hypergeometric distribution. You know, it's similar. It's the product of two combinatorics divided by a combinatoric, but it's not. Don't mistake it as one. The X has to be between K, right? You have to observe at least K objects to find K successes and then it's the minimum of this requirement it really depends upon the number of successes in your population the number of failures you know are they small relative to how many uh, how many successes you want to observe in your trial let's look at an example find the probability that the third ace is dealt on the 12th card from a shuffled deck. Now to me from the very start that is so cool that we can even calculate that so easily. The solution is this if we let the random variable be the number of cards dealt of course we we want to find the probability that x is 12 right 12th card dealt n is 52 there's 52 cards in a deck R is four, right? There's four aces, and we're interested in observing the third ace. So you just plug them into the formula, and the probability is 0.8% that you observe the third ace on the 12th dealt card. Now, we're going to look at the mean and the variance. I'm going to provide the formulas, but we're not going to calculate them because they're a little bit tedious and I think it's going to detract from the beauty of the negative hypergeometric distribution. I'll prove them in another video not part of this playlist. So let x be a negative hypergeometric random variable with parameters n, r, and k. The mean of x is given by this formula. k times n plus 1 over r plus 1. The variance of the hypergeometric is given by this crazy formula. And now I want to calculate and simulate the example that we just did. So let's see if I can make this bigger. No, it's going to lose it from the screen. So I create a function called dneg hype, which stands for the density of a negative hypergeometric distribution. And it has these four parameters, x, n, r, and k. And if x is greater or equal to k and less than or equal to this requirement, then it provides that the value, you know, the, the product of the combinatorics divided by combinatorics. If it doesn't meet it, it, it prints out a zero. So when we plug in 12, 52, and 4, we get the same value, 0.8% chance of that happening. Um, I think I'm going to leave it big and just scroll. So here's a simulation. And the crazy thing is, this simulation could be one line. I put 500,000, a half million 
in in and and I could technically put in in here and and it and we'd only need one line but I want to go through this a little bit this function here so we're creating a vector that's what C is in R of 48 zeros and four ones and that represents a deck of cards right four aces 48 non aces we're sampling 12 of them without replacement. We're going to add up the observation. So cumulative sum. And that's going to tell us where the aces are. But in reality, we're only interested in the last two, the 11th position and the 12th position. And they have to equal two and three. Right, the third ace has to be in the twelfth position, and has to be a two in the eleventh position. If this is situation is met, then we know that we've dealt the third ace on the twelfth card. And the all checks to see how many trues and falses we have, and they all have to be true. So both have to be true for this to be a true. So this is going to create a vector of length. 500,000 is going to be all trues and falses, or a 1 if it's a true and a 0 if it's not. Then we're going to add up that vector of 1s and zeros and divide by 500,000. And that's going to tell us the proportion of these observations that met the criteria of the third ace being dealt on the 12th card. And look at it. It's the same, you know, it's approximately the same probability. To me, I, I find that so fascinating when the theory and the simulations and reality are, are in agreement. Now, I want to plot the probability density functions of this example. So, we're going to let x be 1 to 52. Now, f1, 2, 3, and 4 are the density functions for when k is 1, k is 2, k is 3, k is 4. And we just looked at k equals 3 when x is 12. You know, So we're going to let n equal 52, 52 cards, r is 4, there's 4 aces. And then this cycles through the, the density of the negative hypergeometric distribution for the different values of k, right? k is 1, k is 2, 3, and 4. I'm going a little fast. As always, I'll copy and paste this R code into the comments of the, the video. So we're going to plot them and then to add the more lines and create a legend. And this is it. So these are the probability densities for when K equals, let's just look at K equals 1. It's the black line. So this is the probability that the first dealt ace is the first card. This is the probability. Probability it's the second card, the fourth, the fifth. Here's the probability that it's the tenth card. And then so on. And it only goes to 48, right? It can't be the 49th, 50, 51, you know, card because it has, I mean, it could be the 49th. 49, 50, 51, 52, yeah. So the last three are zero because, it, you know, we can't deal the other aces first. The probability that the second ace is dealt on a specific card is this red line. So notice that the probability that the second ace has highest probability of being dealt in here. Third ace. So this is the probability that the third ace is dealt on a specific card, has highest probability in here. The fourth ace, which I find interesting also, is this the probability that the fourth ace is dealt on a specific card and it has highest probability of being dealt on the 52nd card okay well that's all i have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did please like this video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye